The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN, 9 a.m. Eastern Time, Monday morning. we got about 30 minutes to go until the start of trading, and we got markets slightly in the red this morning as we kick things off. Uh, appreciate all the guest hosts last week, our man Teddy Kegstad, our man Larry Pezzavento, uh, our man Basil Chapman filling in for me. Feels great to be back, charged up. Quite a week in the markets while I was away. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, the markets trade down to 38.55 on Thursday for a low. We close out the week at about 4,000 on the dot, folks. Uh, excuse me, 4,020 on the dot. We're trading right now negative by 10 points. Remarkable acceleration in both directions. We'll see where we go on the opening bell. 23 minutes from right now, you get the NASDAQ right now, negative by 29 points. You're talking about down to 11,600, folks. That's 5,000 points off the highs of 16,600 and change. Remarkable. Dow off 28 points right now, trading at 32,095. We almost had a 30,000 handle. On Thursday, you got the Russell negative by three right now at 1785. Bitcoin, we'll talk a little bit of crypto, man. You talk about a pullback in crypto last week, 25,350. You could say Bitcoin saves itself, at least for a moment. We're trading right at about 30,000 right now for Bitcoin. Ethereum, trading right at about 2,000. We were as low as 1,700 last week. We jumped to commodities. How about crude holding steady at 110.28? Crude had a 98 handle last week. Gold contract, down as well. You're flat right now, but man, we were at 1785 early in the session. We're trading at 1807 right now. Silver positive by 27 cents right now. We jumped to notes and bonds. Last week, interesting action uh, as you have yields pulling back. So yields pull back. The market still sells off. Nonetheless, we spike to 120, we'll call it. We're trading right now at 119.12. You got the 10 year yield sitting at about 2.91%. Let me take a look at it to be exact 2.913, 2.91%. The yield on the 10 year. All right, where do we kick things off? Uh, let's kick it off with a little talk of recession. Almost statements of the obvious, but I saw this one out this weekend. Yeah, this article is dated yesterday. Uh, I was reading it on Bloomberg, but I got it up here on CNBC talking about the ex-Goldman CEO blank fine. Talking about recession possibility is very high risk. Talking about uh, if you're a CEO of a company, you better be prepared for it. It's almost the obvious, folks, in terms of what is going on. There is obviously a very real risk in terms of where the economy is, the inflationary factors going on, the supply chain woes that are going to continue to exist for some period of time. And yeah, everybody talks about this path that the Fed has, that they're going to hike, 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 hike. We're going to be dealing with supply chain woes as they hike. And somehow uh, they have this path that they're going to pull back the economy, but not pull it back far enough where it shrinks. Very difficult to do, to say the least. Uh, you even got Bernanke out there saying the Fed's slow response to inflation was a mistake. Talk about the most obvious statements of obvious statements. Uh, of course it was a mistake at this point. We got inflation raging at 8%. 8%. We got markets pulling back 25 to 30% as the Fed's going to hike 50 basis points on an ongoing basis because they are late to the party, folks. Uh, obvious statements. Make sure you're aware of them because they're coming from all sides right now. And I almost chuckle every time I hear them is in obvious statements, to say the least. Uh, let's go to New York manu Empire Manufacturing. So this one out this morning contracts for the second time in three months. When you take a look at the number, you're talking about minus 11.6. So the Federal Reserve Bank of New York's General Business Condition Conditions Index dropped over 36 points from where it was uh, to 11.6. That's the second time in three months that it's been a minus. That is reflecting plunges in orders and shipments. Um, the New York Fed's data are the first set of several regional Fed manufacturing numbers set to release over the coming weeks. Similarly, d disappointing figures may further stoke concerns. Yeah, you better believe it, man. Uh, new orders dropped nearly 34 points in May to a minus 8.8. .8. 
shipments measure fell at the fastest pace since early in the pandemic, sinking about 50 points. The prices index fell from a record high last month to a still elevated 73.7. Uh, the gauge of prices received also eased. So a little bit of easing on the prices if you want a little bit of silver lining there. But you're talking about a slowdown potentially of economic activity over there to say the least. And let's just jump into crypto, man, because this one was a, a mind blower. So let's jump over to Coinbase first, okay? You want to talk about a pullback, man. Be careful on this equity. Uh, yes, you are up $28 from where it was trading on Thursday morning. Yeah, we don't even need a monthly. But you are down from 429 when it goes public just over a year ago, folks. You are down from 350 from where it was on November 8th. A lot of this having to do with Bitcoin, okay? But they are definitely in severe risk that bankruptcy is an option on that equity. You had the CEO out there talking about, of course it's not. He's going to say that until it's, uh, until it is. So I would not be in this equity at all. Uh, I even saw something, I'll do some more research of it, talking about uh, one of the statements in there. Folks, this is not like you're putting money in an FDIC insured you know, TD Ameritrade Thinkorswim brokerage account, okay, where those are segregated funds, your funds actually stand the risk of being commingled with Coinbase operating funds if they go BK. And I think that's the case. I'll dig into it more, but I would not be touching this. Now, to jump over to Bitcoin, <clears throat> I mean, there's the correlation, right? They go public, kudos to the market, they get Coinbase public at highs you touch those highs back in november as well that's when coinbase was up near those highs as well and you're back to thirty thousand. now here's what's interesting right bitcoin's trading at thirty thousand. bitcoin was trading at thirty thousand right after their ipo okay from may until july you go back to coinbase may to july coinbase was trading at 223. so it's not all just correlated to the crypto price on this equity, folks. They have a huge slowdown going on, okay? The market pullback is tying into this as well. But man, this story about Luna and the stable coin, quote unquote, well, folks, uh, and this one is about one of the gentlemen out there that said he was warning about it, Terra. Uh, $60 billion is what got wiped out, folks, in the combination between you have UST stablecoin, and then you have their Terra coin, which is different. So the Terra stablecoin, yeah. So you have Terra at 41 billion, and then you have the UST at 19 billion. They both combined to reach $60 billion. And we're gonna go through this a little bit because this was a wake up. I read it this weekend. And uh, so Kevin Zhao of the crypto hedge fund Galileos warned the industry about the implosion. And he walks through exactly how he walked through this in terms of pegging that it was a problem. And we're going to go through this after the break, so folks. So we'll tease it. It's a wake-up call. Um, but it was an algorithmic stable coin. And if you think that there's stability in a, in a crypto not backed by anything, then let this be a lesson to you, man. And maybe they'll come up with one eventually. Uh, but this one had some holes in it, and hindsight is always 2020. But boy, some of these holes, if you read this article, folks, we're going to go through it. It was a wild one. Yeah, great story. Understanding that crypto is a Ponzi. My dad's in there saying, yeah, you got to hear this one. Right back. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. 
Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. In a time of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16-year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Welcome back, folks. We got markets in the negative. You got the S&Ps negative by 12 points right now. We're sitting at 4,007. You take a look on a Fibonacci basis, right? You're talking about the 382 right at about 3,800. We make it down to 3,855. Quite a tail last week. This week, we're beginning in the red yet again. We'll see where we go as we get the opening bell in about 11 minutes. Jumping back to this story. So to help you understand how these two work, you have a Okay. And I'll just read you some of this. So, stable coins are a way to move money around with confidence that you won't suddenly lose a large sum of it. Okay, they're an important part of the ecosystem that people are trying to create within crypto uh, to eliminate some of the volatility because there is nothing right now that is basically stable in the crypto world uh, as a quote unquote store of value. There are some stable coins that are backed by actual reserves of some degree. Those, uh, could have some severe risk to them too though folks okay because whether you actually know that money is there where is that money how is it tied up is it leveraged at all etc there are all those questions okay but this one in particular okay as it says to maintain a steady value usually a peg that tries to stay as close to the u.s dollar as possible many of these coins are backed by securities like treasuries or cash reserves or over collateralized with some combination of crypto that's where things get a little fishy if you're just collateralized quote unquote but where this one was different, okay, we'll call it UST, tried to do something different. Instead of using assets as a peg, it depended on an algorithm and an arbitrage mechanism, essentially promising that one UST would always be remarkable, re redeemable, for $1 worth of the Luna cryptocurrency token. Okay, so if Luna's worth a dollar, then your UST would be worth one Luna. Because you got to make sure that one UST is worth one US dollar. Okay. If Luna rises to $100, then the algorithm is then going to adjust that one UST would entitle an investor to 0 0.01 Luna, therefore giving you that same one US dollar. Okay. You're not gaining any of the appreciation of Luna. Luna is just acting as the algorithmic peg 
to keep your UST at $1. So for crypto proponents who distrust fiat currencies, the ability to create a stable currency without links to the traditional financial system is an important goal. So I was trying to express early on. So this is an important goal. Now, here's where things get a little fishy. Let's scroll down. Where, so Luna had promised 20% returns is how this comes in, okay? So what this talks about is that basically stable coins are a feature in decentralized finance or DeFi, allowing investors to transact in crypto and digital assets. They're using a wide variety of lending, borrowing, trading, and yield farming, yield farming programs, okay? Despite the money pouring into the space, seemingly high returns on an offer, it's still unclear where a lot of the yield comes from. Pay attention here, folks, because it's coming from a Ponzi scheme, okay? In the Odd Lots interview, I think this is a podcast that they do, um, they had a CEO on here talking about De DeFi as basically a magic box, okay? People put their money into a magic box. Magic box, folks, are you hearing this words? And they're incentivized by some token, okay? And then the more money that goes into the box, over time, the box is worth a lot of money. Maybe the box becomes a bank or culminates in some other important project. You know, some of these cryptos are gonna have real uses, okay? Some aren't. But it doesn't matter as long as you get into the box early and sell before everybody else. That's called a crypto. Uh, that's called a Ponzi scheme, to folks. Okay, now Luna was not just any box, but a particularly egregious one that was designed to enrich insiders. While the Luna Terra arbitrage kept the two assets steady in terms of their relationship, it was the eye-popping yields. Now, I didn't even know this was going on because I'm just not really into it as much as you have to be to know. But if you knew, it seemed like this might have been something that should have been on people's radar, man. 20% on offer in the project's anchor protocol that lured them into the ecosystem in the first place. Okay, so they have a 20% yield is what they're talking about. Now, where does that 20% yield come from? Where did the promised 20% return come from? Technically speaking, it came out of a private stash of Luna token, which was held by Terraform Labs, which is the ones who created it. So when the ecosystem first gets created, funds are set aside for the company. So let's say TFNN creates a crypto. We create TFNN Tiger Dollar crypto. We say we're going to keep a billion Tiger Dollars for ourselves. And then somehow in the algorithm of everything going on, they're going to vest over a certain period of time. Okay. When the Terra ecosystem first got started, there were some funds that were set aside for the company itself. And the main company is Terraform Labs, and they have this huge stash of Luna. And it unlocks over a certain vesting schedule. So what they would do in order to finance operations, it's just, it makes me chuckle. And it's really unfortunate because a lot of people lost a lot of money. But it makes me chuckle in how just brazen it is when you just give yourself a bunch of crypto and then say, I'm gonna reward everybody 20% in this and I'm gonna give you it from my stash. And here's where it ends up, okay? So what they would do in order to finance their operations and to also finance that yield reserve is that they would sell large clips of this to willing investors at some kind of discount that also has a one year cliff and some kind of vesting schedule. So they're selling it and then they're saying, but you can't sell it for a year. I mean, it's just crazy, man. If you were doing this in anything else in crypto, you'd probably have the feds on your door in no time. And then they would use that money that they would sell that Luna for, for operations. And then they would also use that to keep basically topping up on their yield reserves. So they gave a simpler explanation for where the 20% would come from. What I always like to say is that most of the time, if you can't find where the yield is coming from, then effectively it's coming from future bag holders, okay? Now, that's one gentleman out there talking, okay? But boy, <coughs> excuse me, when you get into it, so this is what made Luna grow so extraordinarily in a short period of time. Uh, this type of growth hacking can be fantastic, but it can be a curse. Luna became a victim of its own success, draining reserves at an incredibly fast pace by a burgeoning community of UST holders who were eager to nab those 20% returns. Check out these numbers here. At the peak, they were burning maybe $7 million a day in their yield reserve, right? That's their reserve that they had to be paying out, okay, at the peak. And originally, their reserves were something like 50 to 80 million. And then they had to do a top up of 450 million. And then, you know, very quickly, soon after that was almost depleted, they were thinking about how much to do another top up. In theory, Terra could have lowered the yield 
But then what happens? People say, well, wait a second, I was here for 20%, you're doing a 10, you start a sell-off, so they did not do that, okay? They could have lowered the yield, they could have slowed their cash burn from that reserve, but they didn't do it, they kept it there. And as a result, it eventually ended up just crashing. Um, you know, I could go through more and more and more, folks. If you get a chance to read this article, it's a great one. Um, and yeah, around May 7th, someone appeared to make a huge sale of UST, swapping it for USDC, Tether and DAI. The selling was so big that UST liquidity basically vanished and the first real deviation from a peg emerged. Be careful out there, folks. We'll leave it at that. It was a wake-up call for me. Um, it was especially a wake-up call when there were so many fans of this crypto out there. I mean, it was a top 10 crypto. This is not a Dogecoin story that it's worthless being pumped by Elon. This was something that had a lot of fans because of the theory behind it. Um, and $60 billion got lost basically overnight. Uh, check this article out if you get a chance on Bloomberg. And uh, to this gentleman that was trying to warn everybody, uh, kudos to him and those that weren't listening. It's a bummer. We'll stay back. We'll stay tuned. We'll be right back for the if you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. .com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. You're looking at an S&P that opens down about one third percent. You're negative by 14 points right now, trading just above the 4,000 price point, 4,006. We got the NASDAQ a little bit lower this morning. You're negative six tenths percent, 12,306. The Dow off 22 points right now. I had an article up here from uh, Yahoo Finance just going over. We got a big week of retail sales. We'll talk about that in a moment. But check out um, 
where we are in terms of these indices, I mean, just remarkable in terms of the acceleration you got from the COVID lows. The yellow is the NASDAQ. The green here is the S&P 500. Let me blow that up even a little bit and close this out. Green's the S&P 500, and the purple is the Dow. The Dow had been the biggest laggard, S&P in the middle, NASDAQ, NASDAQ 100 in particular, just gangbusters to the top side. And you're talking about all the way back, man, those growth stocks just giving it back in a big way. Remarkable in terms of that pullback. Uh, and yeah, we'll see where it goes from here, folks. Let's jump over to some of the FANG stocks, see how they're opening up. We'll jump over to Amazon shares. You were down to 2,048 last week. You're trading right now basically flat for Amazon 2261. Apple shares this morning down a percent, 145.62. You're down a buck 43 on Apple at 145 right now. You jump over to Microsoft shares. Microsoft down about seven tenths percent right now. You jump over to Google, negative by about four tenths percent as well. All right, so jumping back to some of the articles that I had pulled up, talking about inflation, talking about human capital. It's interesting. Uh, lots of articles out here talking about whether it's perks of being on the job or just straight out salaries. We'll start off with Goldman Sachs. Senior staff, unlimited vacation. Partners, managing directors granted flexible vacation. Firm expects staff to take at least 15 days of holiday a year. Um, what I first thought in this is that is anybody truly, if they're at this stage of their career in terms of being, a managing director or a partner at Goldman Sachs. Now, yeah, you you know, hopefully you can escape for a couple days or even a week and, and turn off everything. But I don't think you're stepping away for three weeks and not even looking at your phone if you're at that level of management in a company like Goldman Sachs, as in we're all reachable by the phone, right? Even when you're on vacation, yeah, you're stepping away from maybe the daily details of things, but you're still able to function. Um, and... They're not giving them a fixed vacation day entitlement anymore. So they're going to allow senior staff to take unlimited vacation days as they try and retain talent and a heated job market. Partners and managing directors uh, take, can take it off when needed without a fixed vacation day entitlement. Yeah, and all of the employees are going to be required to take three weeks off each year starting in 2023. That includes at least one week of consecutive time off. The new vacation policy comes more than a year after junior analysts at the bank complained of 100-hour work weeks and declining physical and mental health. Uh, yeah, those junior analysts, man, watch out uh, from all the stories that you hear at those investment banks. But it's going to be interesting to see how this landscape changes in terms of firms trying to hire top capital in, in a market that is uh, – Human capital is coming at a cost right now. Now, we go from there to Walmart. You're going to be a store manager. $210,000 is what you'll be making at a Walmart. Stepping up efforts to entice college graduates. They're starting a whole new program. They get a fast track to jobs as store managers. And they're going to call it College to Career Program. Classroom training, hands-on experience, mentoring for recent and soon-to-be graduates. Top performers are going to be offered a newly created management role as an emerging coach. Starting salary, 65 grand a year, and a speedy path to becoming a store manager. Uh, those store managers in 2021, average wage, $210,000. Uh, and with that new program, they're aiming to move emerging coaches to store managers within two years. Two years. Uh, you're seeing it play out across the board. Now, they just talked about, right, this article was out there about a month ago, Walmart, that they're going to be paying truckers, in-house truckers, as much as $110,000. <clears> this is why I'm a believer in Amazon as well, folks. You're seeing the biggest of the big solidify themselves in a way that many will struggle to compete in, okay? I've said it before. Amazon, yeah, they built out their infrastructure way too quickly. That's part of the reason why they lost money last quarter. It's part of the reason why they might lose money again in the next quarter. But if you think about the company itself on a longer-term basis, the ability to navigate COVID and not miss a single delivery, they had something like 750,000 workers before COVID. They doubled that to like 1.6 million, 1.5 million workers. Obviously got a little bit ahead of themselves, but how do you compete with a company like that? Even Walmart, okay? They're the closest competitor, and they're struggling. Walmart's going to be struggling. Uh, Walmart's not going to be struggling when they get in some of those, you know, important factors in terms of human capital. But you're seeing it play out, man, as the biggest of the big, solidifying themselves in ways that are going to be very difficult uh, for other companies to keep up with. 
when who has the ability to be paying store managers $200,000 a year right now, paying truckers $110,000 a year, right? Amazon, uh, they pay $15 an hour. Amazon, I think I saw something, man, that their maternity leave, it's long. I can't remember what it is. It's months. It's something like that. I saw the uh, the advertisements. They were great ads. They, they do a good job of really taking care of their workers, and that's part of the reason why that you've seen that the unionization efforts at Amazon haven't taken hold, as some may expect. Uh, because their workers overall are paid pretty decently. And that's what you see those arguments happen. Now, I am pro-union, folks. My mom worked for Verizon forever. Uh, the reason why she was able to retire just after being 60 years old was because she was a union member. And the real reason is because they're really overpaying the union members to get them out so they can other bring other people in and pay them less for the same exact job. But nonetheless, it's remarkable how much these companies are spending. And I'm not sure how... Anybody's going to be able to compete unless you're in the top echelon when you're talking about the type of money that they are paying. All right. So we have a big week of retail earnings this week. Now, jumping back to the article I had pulled up here. Let me scroll down to get the – excuse me because we got Walmart this week as well. We got Home Depot. We got Target. We got Lowe's as well jumping into it. So after today, after the close, we get Take-Two Interactive – Talking video games. Uh, tomorrow, though, we got Walmart before the bell. You jump over to Walmart shares. It's held up very well so far this year. You're trading at 148. Walmart's positive yet again, a third of percent as the market's negative 21 points now. Walmart, you jump over to the Analyze tab. They'll be looking for a $6.42 move. Their number's out tomorrow before the bell, so not that big of a move for Walmart uh, as to be expected. You also get Home Depot tomorrow as well. Home Depot talking about a little bit bigger move you got an 18 dollar move now home depot again before the market tomorrow we jump over to their chart quite a pullback man you almost give it all back from this run that we had that started march of 2021 now that's not the covid low okay when we've been taking the lows from covid for a while but you're up to 420 you're down 1.1 percent today for home depot you're at 292 we're effectively right back to where we were in january of last year when we were pushing about 285 was the high there now, you back up for Home Depot. We're going to take that Fibonacci number off there. You trade from 140 to a high about 293. So you got a $150 leg on the upside. Okay. You trade from 250 to about 400. But another 150 point leg to the upside. And just like that, you give it all back. Now, if you talk about the Fibonacci from the lower end, you're talking bouncing right off the 50% for Home Depot. You also have an area of a consolidation back here from the later part of 2020 to the early part of 2021. Uh, but it's going to be interesting to see where we go. The 618 of Home Depot, 247. As I mentioned, they have about an $18 move priced into their earnings before the bell tomorrow. All right, folks, stay tuned. We're going to be coming back. We'll talk about what else we got. We have Target is going to be out before the market. On Wednesday, you got TJ Maxx, you have Lowe's. We'll take a look at those. We got Cisco, Bath and Body Works after the close on Wednesday. We get some big earnings, man. Kohl's before the market on Thursday. I was in a Kohl's this week. It was a good experience. We'll take a look at Kohl's when I get back. Uh, Ross Stores. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. 
for daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities. Subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. With market volatility roaring back in April, Larry Pesavento has just announced a five-hour live trading webinar coming up on May 17th. Larry Pesavento is a 56-year trading veteran and has mastered his trading skills through many different market fluctuations. Join Larry on May 17th as he hosts a live five-hour trading webinar from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Eastern Time, giving you insight into how he analyzes the market and decides his plays. Larry will delve deep into the ABCD trading pattern, explaining how to structure your trading day, the times most likely to generate signals, which signals to ignore, and how to use the pattern to mitigate risk. In this all-day five-hour live trading webinar, take a seat by Larry's side as he trades the market markets real time, including the Dow and S&P 500 E-mini, crude oil, natural gas, gold, treasury bonds, wheat and soybeans, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar yen, and more. If you've ever wanted to get inside the mind of a market master, you cannot miss this live trading webinar. To sign up today, just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&P right now, negative by just seven. NASDAQ 100, negative by 45. Dow, negative by 43. And how about the Russell? Sneaking into the positive by one point right now at 1792. Back to crypto for a moment. Uh, Bitcoin, trading right now down 170 bucks. You're trading at 29,865. We jump over to Coinbase. They're negative 1.9% right now, trading at 66.47. We had a little bit of volatility right on the spike open. Check it out. There's some volatility for you, man. From 69 bucks down to 62. That's a 10% drop. Since then, we're up $4. Be careful on this equity, folks. I kicked the program off with it, okay? Surprising to me. Shouldn't be surprising. I had my Series 7 at one point. I mean, a finance professional. I was uh, past the Series 7 exam, right? You go over all that stuff. I know that Coinbase isn't some FDIC-insured brokerage that's that's uh, insured by the government to make sure you don't lose your money. No, and now Coinbase is telling you that, folks. The crypto exchange is now warning the bankruptcy could wipe out all user funds, okay? Now, they have – now, they lost $430 million, 19 percent drop in monthly users, okay? People just stop trading crypto, folks, when it's just tanking. That's a big problem for Coinbase. They hold $256 billion in both fiat currency and cryptocurrency on behalf of the, comp the comp customers, excuse me. Yet, in their recent filing, okay, so this is new, they felt the need to put this in. In their recent filing, the exchange noted that in the event it ever declared bankruptcy, the crypto assets we hold be subject to bankruptcy proceedings. That's not how it works with most brokerages accounts, folks. They would be unsecured creditors, meaning they have no right to claim any specific property from the exchange in the proceedings. The funds would become inaccessible. So we won't spend too long on it, folks, uh, but be careful. I mean, if that's the case, how are they going to grow? I wouldn't touch that thing ever, man. I'm not holding a single dollar of crypto in Coinbase, man, if they're just going to take my money if they mismanage the company. Not how it should be happening. All right, let's jump around to see some of those companies we talked about with earnings. Let me find that page where we are. So as I talked about, pulling up the numbers here, we talked about that we get Home Depot and Walmart before the bell tomorrow. Now we get... Their sister companies, you could say, or brother companies, Target and Lowe's, on Wednesday before the market. Target's been a roaring company, man. You're down 1.3% right now. Uh, quite the pullback from 268. But you talk about a run from the COVID lows of $90 up to 268. We backed off a bit. You touched the 382 at just about $200, also correlated to the high we had. 
in the early part of 2021. And you jump over to the Analyze tab, you're talking about a $14 move expected for their numbers. They'll be out Wednesday before the bell. We jump over to Lowe's. Lowe's, you got a $13 move priced in for $189 stock. This one, you give back a 618 in the move we had just from the beginning of uh, 2021. And Lowe's, man, goes from 60 bucks all the way up to 263 and putting a Fibonacci on the full retracement number. The 382 of the full run of COVID, you're looking at a price point of about 185. We're trading at 189 right now. Uh, that's an area you could look to trade. Not good that you're down 2.3% right now, down $4.39. Let me take the short-term one off for some clarity there. So you're sitting right at the 382. You break through that 382, man, you're probably on your way to 160, where you chopped around for a bit towards the end of 2020. So we got Lowe's, we got Target. We also get TJ Maxx before the open on Wednesday as well, TJX. A little bit of a different story as we've pulled back from 77 to 55. You're back to the consolidation you had from the middle of 2020, but you are below everything that you've been in on this equity back to November of 2020. As you see, we just took a look at the other equities, right? TJ Maxx, not looking as strong as some of the other equities that we've taken a look at at retail right now, in my opinion. You're down 2.5% as the market is selling off as we speak, folks. And I talked about Kohl's. So Kohl's, I was looking at Kohl's last night because I was in a Kohl's. Now, that's a decent chart. You're uh, you're back to the bottom part of this consolidation for Kohl's. You were at 10 bucks during the bottom of COVID. This thing really accelerated from 20 up to 64. Uh, but you had a chop around area that you're kind of just basically sitting in right now. Okay, now nothing says that you can't trade below that. But I always like when I got my back against the wall, man. Kohl's down to 47 bucks. And just from a personal perspective, I was in a Kohl's this weekend. I got... Uh, so my fiance, she has a 15-year-old daughter, uh, Sephora. It looked like the outside of the Kohl's, folks, if you haven't seen it, had a Sephora sign that looked like there was almost a Sephora that it was that was as big as the Kohl's inside. We actually weren't sure if it was a standalone Sephora at first. And we said, no, I'm pretty sure they're in the Kohl's. Okay, let's go check it out. And yes, they had a decent sephora in the coal store and you're seeing a lot of this happen target's doing the same thing right where they're having kind of shops within their shop to bring people in there but so what did it do it got us into coals okay so then we're in coals we're in coals only because they had sephora so then we're looking at some clothing they had a couple great items i was with the family didn't want to try everything on right we got the kids we got tommy in there he's 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 doing his thing, not very patient at times to go be trying on a bunch of clothes. He's only a year and three months about right now. Uh, but I was actually literally taking pictures of a couple different items. I said, man, these are cool shorts. These are nice, nice items. I'm going to check those out. Maybe I'll come back uh, when I don't have the kids, try them on. And then what do we have to do? We had to buy some dolls for the kids. We had to buy some Disney dolls for the kids. Ten bucks a pop. Uh, so Landon, who's five, he got a Mickey Mouse doll. Disney, go for it. He did that. That wasn't me. And uh, little Tommy, he got to choose out his. There was Simba. The Simba Lion was there from Lion King. He's a big Lion King fan, folks. Who isn't, right? Great movie, great music. He loves those Disney musicals. Uh, but what did he go for? He went for Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh was calling his name. So what do we do? We walk out with two uh, dolls of all things. Well, when you got kids, you understand it a little bit. So we spent 20 bucks in Kohl's for a couple dolls. Um, but in general, folks, it was a good experience. There were a lot of people in there. They had a lot of great items in there. And sometimes pay attention to those personal experiences because uh, I think Kohl's has a good thing going on right now. Now, you're down 3.1%, okay? So their numbers are out on Thursday before the market. They're going to have some volatility, man. <coughs> Excuse me. You're talking about $7.82. You're trading options. There's some premium for you. What is that? 16 17% priced into this equity. And as you can see, it's moving a lot today, though. Moving $1.60 ahead of their numbers on Thursday before the bell. All right, speaking of volatility, folks, coming up tomorrow, we got our man Larry Pizzavento, and what a time for a live trading event, folks. You can check this out on the front page of TFNN. We have a great group of people already signed up for it, so you're going to have a good crowd in there. This is taking place in our new Discord server, okay? Uh, so you do need to join Discord if you've signed up for Larry's webinar. Okay, it's $295. With that, you get a month of his newsletter that's a $97 value. So really, you chop it down to about 200 bucks for a live trading class, five hours. It's going to go from 9 a.m. till 2 p.m. Eastern time tomorrow. So Larry's not going to be doing his show tomorrow. He's going to be in there live trading. Uh, he was on with my dad on 
Friday. He covered one of my programs yesterday, last week. I appreciate it. He's doing double duty a couple days. He is primed and ready, folks. He's talking about, uh, I heard him, maybe five or six trades is what he's looking for. Maybe one an hour. It's going to be an awesome trading event, I imagine, folks. Five hours, nine till two tomorrow. And man, we got quite a market for this. Check it out on the front page and please sign up early, folks, okay? Because if you sign up tomorrow morning, all right, Jacob, who's done an outstanding job with the Tigers Den, myself, we're going to be helping everyone get in there. But there's only so much we can do, folks. If we get 10 or 20 people that sign up tomorrow, five minutes before the start, it's going to take us a few minutes to get you in that room if you have some questions. So please head on over there, sign up now. Right when you sign up, you gain access to Fibonacci 24-7. Larry had some amazing videos out there for subscribers. You'll instantly get to watch over the weekend. Check out the front page. We'll be right back. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. This is TFNN, the Tiger Financial News Network. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&P right now. Market selling off, negative 26 points. You got the Russell, negative eight. Russell was positive, right? NASDAQ 100, negative 120 points right now. This is a long-term weekly chart. Uh, remarkable acceleration from where we've come in the beginning of April. It's May 16th, folks. You got negative prices across the board. Jumping to airlines. So JetBlue, man, they've been at a pullback, right? So real quickly, here's the chart of JetBlue. You're at $9, folks. For some context here, we were trading at $9, as the market fell apart during COVID when nobody was ever going to fly again. Okay, now you have crude at 110. Okay, that's going to hurt a lot of these airlines. But JetBlue is very domestic. 
a good comparison for them is Southwest. Southwest ain't near those lows, folks. Okay, JetBlue, and I love JetBlue. They have some great, they got a big hub in Boston. They fly to Tampa, so I was always flying them. Haven't flown them in a while. But, man, my friends have been having horror stories on JetBlue uh, in terms of flying out of there. My mom was flying Saturday night. She had the last flight going Boston back down to Tampa, delayed two, two and a half hours, something like that. Southwest is up 1%. The reason why JetBlue is down is because they're going hostile takeover for Spirit. Spirit Airlines is up 9.7%. Now, remarkably, uh, they're going hostile takeover at 30 bucks a share and ready to go to 33 if the board negotiates a consensual transaction. So I love JetBlue. They should be getting their own act in order before they start going after another airline because from everything I can tell, they have some serious, serious problems with whether it's reliability, whether it's staffing, whatever it is. OK, the chart is not lying, folks. OK, you were at 22 bucks about a year ago. You're at nine dollars right now. And they're trying to buy uh, spirit for billions of dollars when they can't keep an airline on time. All right, folks, thanks so much for starting your day with me. we got the S&Ps right now, negative 24 points, a little bit of volatility to kick off the trading session. Why not? We jump over to the VIX this morning. VIX, 2920. There's some volatility. Check out Larry's webinar, folks. Sign up. Should be a great day tomorrow. Thanks for starting your Monday with me. Stay tuned, folks. Larry's up now. Uh, excuse me. Basil's up at 10. Larry at 11. Fast market at 12. Steve Rhodes, Dave White, Tom O'Brien this afternoon. Have a great one, folks.